Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we're going to talk about how physicians should leverage social media during the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm joined today by Dr. Patrice Harris, president of the AMA and a psychiatrist in Atlanta. Dr. Aletha Maybank, group vice president of AMA's Center for Health Equity in New York City, and Caitlin Gannett, AMA's senior manager of social media and community engagement in Chicago. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's chief experience officer in Chicago. Dr. Harris, what do you see as the physician's role on social media today during this pandemic? Well, Todd, what a wonderful opportunity we have at this moment at the American Medical Association to continue to be a reputable, trusted source of information, information based on the science and the evidence. And so we can certainly use all of our platforms particularly social media, so we can make sure we get trusted, reputable, science-based information out there. So I'm very excited about the opportunity we have at this moment. We have been using social media to get our message out there, and we will continue to do so. Dr. Maybach, I know that you are uh, a very much a Twitter user and use yes. many other social platforms. How are you using it differently than you normally would. Yeah, thanks, Todd. You know, honestly, I'm just I'm just on social media way more <laughs> than I used to be, which sometimes I'm like, oh boy, am I on this a little too much? But you know, it's been you know a great space to just get information, up to date information, very quickly. So get the information, but I think also to share information out, whether it's from the AMA, clearly, you know, retweeting information, posting it on LinkedIn. Um, sharing some stuff on Facebook, uh, but even from other sources, you know, getting information out, I think has been really, really helpful. Um, it's been really helpful for me to, you know, I'm not on the front lines in the way that I was before when I worked at a local health department, uh, you know, here in New York City, but I'm able to get stories and hear the stories in ways that I, I would have probably never thought I could hear. And some of them, you know, are very pointed. You know, I think the whole PPE movement, you know, really amplified the calls on social media. Um, and I think it, it got the attention of many folks, you know, lay public, but also policymakers. So I think it's been a very important vehicle for advocacy um, as well as ev education. Um, and I think also because stories are being shared, it's also an important vehicle for just kind of comfort, right? And knowing that other people are out there experiencing similar things, other people are expressing they're afraid, you know, and and they're fearful, but at the same time, you know, getting information from leaders that we trust, you know, AMA being one of them, but other leaders as well, of just credible information and kind of validation for all the things that we understand and know about science and public health. Are there you know, people Todd, out before there that, you go, yeah. yeah, that's okay. Yeah, before <laughs> you go to Caitlin, I just want to uh, put a, a finer point on something that uh, Dr. Maybank just said. And that is that uh, we should all perhaps turn off our filters or our, uh, our, our uh, notice, notices regarding how much time we're spending on social media. Because <laughs> no, at this yes. point, you know, it's probably good that we are spending more time again getting that information out there and, and how critical it is to crowdsource. Like we need PPE and some of those to really elevate and amplify the problems we're having. So I just wanted to uh, let Aletha know and everyone know that during this period of time, it's okay to be on social media a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know uh, one of the, when we think back to the era about you know uh, gun violence, um, mm -hmm. one of the most effective you know campaigns that I saw physicians get involved with was uh, you know this is our lane. Is there a, mm -hmm. a moment here where physicians really use social media to, to shine a reality on this situation? Have you seen people kind of doing that effectively? Yeah, yeah I think absolutely. Oh, sorry. Yes, go ahead, Caitlin. No, go ahead, Dr. Maybank. Go ahead, Caitlin. You go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually was going to uh, bring up Dr. Megan Ranney, who uh, was oh, behind, yeah. uh, yeah. was a big force behind, uh, you know, This Is Our Lane. And everything. She's uh, done a lot of work with one of the more notable movements right now to shine a spotlight on the need for PPE, which is um, really driving the hashtag, hashtag get me PPE. And we've seen that really take off and it has amplified um, the urgent messages from physicians in ways that 
you know, traditional media and, you know, just person to person can't do. And when all three are working in tandem, it can be really powerful. Yeah, I agree. You know, the thing <clears throat> with Dr. Rainey, you know, she's an influencer. She has like a tremendous following. Um, and there are many folks that are kind of out there in the doctor space. It's really I impressive to see that we have these leaders, you know, on social media that are physicians with these strong, powerful voices talking about a spectrum of of information, but when they put something out there, so many people kind of follow, trust, retweet, and amplify. And I think that's a really important role uh, that the physician has really had over the last couple of weeks. Um, and, and identifying these influencers and, and connecting with them have been, has been really important to get information out there in, in a credible way. There's a lot of people out there that are looking for that information. You know, people on TV, they want to hear from the experts. And that's the same on social media, too. You know, being able to identify who those experts are on social media is also really important, too, because there's quite a lot of people saying a lot of things. And so to get those expert voices out there is really critical. I don't know about uh, you all, but I, you know, when I'm on social media, I do see a lot of things that are very upsetting. And sometimes hmm. we're running into a lot of misinformation. You know, what's your guidance for folks as they uh, deal with that same thing? Well, there is so much misinformation and disinformation out there, Todd, and that is all the more reason why uh, the AMA and other trusted sources uh, like uh, Dr. Rainey is so uh, very important. Um, we need to make sure that we are using social media, again, not only to get the science and the evidence out there, but also to speak truth to power. Uh, that is critical in this moment. Those in leadership need to hear uh, the voices of those who are on the front lines. Again, another exciting opportunity about uh, the AMA. We are listening to the voices of physicians and then putting those voices uh, into action. And so I think that's another wonderful opportunity uh, in this moment. We do see a lot and hear a lot that's upsetting. As you know, in the audience knows I am a psychiatrist and so I am also uh, laser focused on appreciating uh, the mental health needs, the emotional needs of all of us during this time. We will certainly need to act on that as we do our after action review after we get through uh, this immediate crisis, by the way, and we will get through this. Together, we will get through this. But in the meantime, it will be important to take breaks from social media, um, particularly when we see things that are upsetting. Uh, we need to then, again, go back to those trusted sources, those who are giving us accurate information. Um, and do other things, self-care, make sure we're eating uh, well, as balanced as we can. It's okay to snack a little bit, over snack a little bit, uh, sleeping well, um, getting in motion. We need to stay active, um, even if that's just putting on your favorite uh, record. Record, okay, now I'm really showing how old <laughs> I am. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put on Frankie Beverly and Mays' Joy and Pain and just dance around my house to that. And so we do need to pay attention to self-care during this time, particularly for physicians who are on the front lines. When they come home, I encourage them, can we meditate, take a breath, breath and certainly practice self-care. And I would say, you know, there have been to the point of the dancing and records, um, you know, <clears throat> Essence, I mean, today, you know, Dr. Harris, you know, participated in an Essence Wellness House conversation, you know, and it's a way that social media is being used to bring people together um, to, to hear facts, to hear information, but also kind of to support each other's wellness at the same time as, as she's elevating. And I think that is really important. We've seen DJs you know, they're on the line and, and even my doctor friends, they're watching the DJ, DJ nights, you know, and, you know, different celebrities are kind of coming through the space, you know, so while we're, you know, doctoring, um, which is, is absolutely critical, you know, during this time and we have folks on the front line and other healthcare workers, I think these spaces are, are really important, I think, on social media and the spectrum of what we see happening now is absolutely incredible. And I think it's absolutely a critical for our health in the long run. Anything that you all see out there on social media you find particularly comforting, motivating, inspiring? 
Yes. Um, <laughs> yesterday, actually, uh, and, you know, not to plug the AMA channels, but to plug the AMA channels, yesterday uh, on Twitter, the AMA featured a lot of really heartwarming sentiments that people mm -hmm. have sent us. They sent notes of thank you, gratitude, and encouragement to physicians, um, and we turned them and you know put them out there and uh, just tried to blanket our feeds. I you know it was Doctor's Day, but we're going to keep doing that because there's a yeah, lot nice. of people sending us encouragement. So if we can help amplify that, you know I've we've heard from numerous people that it was just a really nice thing to see out there, and I think that kind of positivity and encouragement is some of the most heartwarming things I see. And for me, and this is happening all over the world, but I shared a quick video on my uh, Facebook page around everyone going out. I believe it's at seven o'clock, at least he here in Atlanta, going out on their balconies and just Clapping. yelling and screaming and applauding and, and thanking physicians, nurses, other healthcare professionals. So I can just tell you that is is moving to me. I, I, I often find myself uh, moved to tears uh, seeing all of the heartwarming things that, that people are, are, are doing. And so that has been particularly inspiring uh, to me. And I think um, also you know, kind of connected and building on that. I've seen a lot of, you know, just folks supporting one another through the, the, the atmosphere of social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, and just putting words of encouragement directly towards folks, you know, um, you know, and, and, and people talking with each other. Like when I see those conversations happening and, and that support, uh, that's just, it just warms my heart and um, just knows that we're each out there trying to connect with each other's humanity um, in all of this. Yeah, I for one love to see uh so many physicians in their protective gear and at work. Uh, I've gotten to meet so many great physicians and students over the course of the last few years and to mm -hmm. get a glimpse of what they're going through and just in you know my own kind of mind gratitude uh, for their bravery and, and what they're doing out there. So thank you very much to my guests today, uh, Dr. Patrice Harris, Dr. Aletha Maybank and Caitlin Gannett. I will be back with another update uh, tomorrow. In the meantime, if you're looking for any resources on COVID-19, please visit the AMA COVID Resource Center at ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for joining us.